here on the ground floor. Well, as I came in and was perusing the show, I picked up the press release and realized that uh, the show actually opens this evening. So we're getting a preview of the preview. Well, we'll... Uh, start out looking at this piece. This is titled Scorpions 2017 oil on canvas 23 by 19. Okay, it says here in the press release that uh, this is Ellen's first show with Anton Kern. She's a Berlin-based painter. And uh, I thought the work was interesting because I think it uh, spotlights or foregrounds a lot of current uh, issues with painting that a lot of people are paying attention to. This piece is titled Hot Tin Roof. So I guess that's a reference to the Tennessee Williams novel. TV or movie. Let's take except this doesn't look like a regular kitty cat. This looks like a uh, lion cub. Well, I think one of the things that uh, caught my attention was Ellen's use of this uh, heavily scumbled surface. And uh, I guess it's a month or two ago, we were looking at uh, a show by Keith Meyerson, and I uh, made the comment that uh, he was kind of a small brush noodler. And I get the feeling that uh, Ellen uh, is also a noodler, and by that I mean that uh, Seems to spend a lot of time building up, almost obsessively building up her surfaces and uh, building up the impasto. Also, if you look closely, she's got a lot of layers of glazes and washes. And uh, while I was looking at this painting and uh, kind of crossing my eyes, blurring my vision, and thinking about it as just an abstraction, and it almost has the character of a Jackson Pollock. But I think one of the things I like about Ellen's work is the way that she's contrasting these areas of darks and lights. She has these nice uh, edges of her forms
Also, she's got a kind of uh, interesting figurative humor. This is titled Titan. 2017 oil on canvas 63 by 55 and a half. I think also I was getting an echo of uh, some of the great uh, neo-expressionist painters from the early 80s and uh, the person that all, some of this made me think of was uh, Sandro Kia, wonderful painter that's kind of uh, is being revived nowadays. He was considered by many people to be the uh, one of the stars of the trans avant-garde, maybe the first of the three C's, the second C. Let me read a little bit from the press release. How real is the likelihood of metamorphosis? Gronemeyer's paintings seem to ask how probable a change of the form or nature of a thing or person into a completely different one. Let's say the mutation of a young man into a mechanical spider wearing socks and gloves. Okay, so, well, I thought that there was a, uh, an interesting kind of a cartoon reference to artists and I could be wrong but I think his name is Ed Goring there is a, uh, a nice well, obsessive, eccentric uh, building up, and you can almost uh, imagine that uh, Ellen's ideas, you know, when, once she starts the painting and starts building up her textures, things start to change. Uh, forms, shapes, colors start to uh, manifest themselves and she kind of rides the wave. I think this piece is kind of interesting because she's uh, it's like maybe foregone some of the heavier texturing and uh, is using a flatter surface and uh, well in that way it kind of gives you a little a little interval, a little space Kind of like a little chunk of silence in a uh, jazz riff. This piece is titled Think Tank, 55 by 63 inches. Also, a lot of this is kind of of dark. So rather than starting out on a on a white canvas and uh, kind of building up your chiaroscuro going towards the dark side. I think that some of this, at least to me, the finished paintings seem like they're you know, being pulled out of this uh, nubby world of dark, chunky brush strokes. This is pie titled before hangover, before the hangover. I think one thing about working on a kind of nubby surface like that, especially if you're kind of grinding in or brushing in your highlights is that uh, you're able to uh, kind of use those, the tops of the, the nubs as areas upon which you can build up your, your color, your impasto. 
This is titled Herb. I actually like this piece because although it is, I guess, representing some kind of a plant, uh, it's got a nice abstract pattern. And then Ellen also has a nice uh, ability to kind of abstract her forms. And uh, I get a kind of a strange, surrealistic, anxious quality. This is titled High Five. And uh, I think again, this is a little, little smoother, but uh, Alan's given us a nice, simple composition. Looks like a little story teller narrative. Child and the, the kitty. And uh, yeah, nice use of these highlights here on the profile of the face and even in the little kitty's nose. And uh, yeah, this kind of horizontal composition is nice and kind of stabilizes this all. Now let's run upstairs. So here's the uh, installation shots of the second gallery. I like this painting. This is titled Candy Chain. 55 by 63 inches and I think the composition is great uh, well, I was thinking about uh, these lumpy bumpy surfaces and thinking of a great uh, abstract expressionist painter Milton Resnick who uh, influenced a lot of painters and uh, was a friend with a friend of Philip Guston. Yeah, Robert Moskowitz did a fantastic, very famous painting of a swimmer. Kind of looked like that, but that was a that would be the other end of the uh, the spectrum. It was very flat and dry and powdery. Actually, this is kind of noteworthy, the way that uh, Ellen is uh, kind of shaping the front of these faces. This one's behind the, uh, the flotation balls, and this one has got a kind of a face in water. But it's interesting. It's titled Rock Pool. And, uh, okay, this is interesting. Now, this is painter lingo, but uh, it's kind of a nice, ironic metaphor for the, the ground is not the ground, the ground is, is the water. And a little uh, kind of big-eyed, kids with, geez, 20 different colors in their faces. They're nice. And her, uh, her little drips, her little splashes kind of take on their own personalities. This is a self-portrait. Well, this is the uh, namesake of the show. This is titled Frozen. Oil on canvas on board, 12 by nine and three quarters. 
Okay, it's interesting to note the, uh, I guess what would be the negative space between the fingers where the eye is, that Ellen has spent so much attention on that, although it's theoretically a negative space or it should be recessed, that it, uh, it's actually like a relief that that's a pretty thick, chunky part of the painting. Okay, well that was interesting. Uh, Ellen and the the staff here came in and uh, she did a little personal explanation, explication of the work. And I asked her if I could video it, but she was uh, a little bashful. So, uh, but it was nice because she explained uh, some of the aspects of the work and uh, talked about some of her process a little bit. Uh, well, one of the things I noticed is that, uh, well, there's a lot of pedimenti going on under here and it, you know, some of these paintings look like they might have started out as something else. Let's see if you can see some of these uh, horizontal uh, brush strokes. There's still some uh, impasto in there left under the under the paint surface, and uh, Ellen was saying that uh, often she she uses the paintings as the palettes. So I guess maybe you would be working on these horizontally for a while, and then you lay them down and mix paints, and maybe even paint on another painting with that, and then you prop them back up and uh, keep working on them, and maybe the themes change over time. This piece is titled Coupe de Theatre 2017, 63 by 55. And, uh, well, she also pointed out that there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, subtle cartoon things that you might not catch on a quick viewing. I noticed one of these is that uh, this Rider, <laughs> Rita, uh, is riding side saddle. I don't know whether that has any like political or gender uh, ideas that go along with that. This piece was titled Tic Tac, and Ellen did a nice uh, job of talking about this. Uh, one of the things that she said is that in her recent work, these uh, kind of floral motifs have become more prominent. And, uh, well, I'm reading a book now by Elias Rigel, one of the uh, Vienna School art historians. He maybe is the is the founding father of the Vienna School of Art History, and uh, he's talking about how various kinds of motifs and uh, organic versus inorganic, uh, symmetrical versus unsymmetrical forms started. And uh, as far as a decorative pattern, uh, these kind of plant forms are maybe one of the most ancient. Also, uh, Ellen was talking about. This is titled Tic Tac, and she said she kind of used the, the colors that you might see in a pack of Tic Tacs. So this is kind of funny. We got kind of a dog portrait, but it almost looks like the poor little dog's head is twisted around. Like some kind of strange devil dog. Well... We will finish our stroll looking at this piece, Positive Skewness, 37 by 31. I think uh, also I'm, uh, I'm attracted by the fact that Ellen is doing easel painting. And by that I mean a lot of these paintings are well, I guess the size that you could pick up and put in the 
the back seat of your car, maybe even put it in the trunk of your car. I had a, an old friend that always said, if you're gonna have work at an art fair or something, you wanna be, uh, and you wanna sell work, you wanna make sure that it'll fit in the back of someone's car. Uh, but there is a long, long, long history of um, easel painting, and part of the New York school was the idea that uh, well, we're Americans, we come from a big country, and we should make big paintings. And, uh, well, we've seen a couple of shows of big paintings. Catherine Bernhardt had a show down in Canada that we looked at. And, uh, well, I'm hoping that uh, we get the Judy Chicago piece edited before you see this, but she's also got some big pieces. But most of Ellen's work is very manageable, and, uh, I think in a certain way, one of the things that goes along with uh, working on an easel-sized painting is that uh, you can get into these kinds of surfaces. Uh, you can really uh, kind of pick up and feel and touch the surface in a way that you normally wouldn't if you were working on a painting that was say, 12 by 20 feet, 12 by 18 feet. And, uh, well, I like that quality. Also, I wanted to ask her about her, maybe her, who she thinks about with the, uh, as her influences and stuff, and these kind of uh, great faces make me think of uh, maybe Max Beckman, but uh, this goes back, way back in art history, to people like Montaigne, the beginning of the Renaissance. James Calm reporting on Ellen Gronemeyer here at the Anton Kern Gallery, 16 East 55th Street in Midtown. You can leave your comments, criticisms, reviews, ideas, suggestions below. And thank you, Kate. Thank you. Thank you. What's your name? Uh, Anki. Anki? Yeah, Anki Chosen. Thanks, Anki.